what do you do or what should you do when you get paid? Or even better question would be, what do financially responsible people do when they get their paycheck? Well, if you find a financially responsible person, let me know so I can ask them, but I'm gonna tell you what I do when I get paid in this video. If we haven't met already, my name is Anthony McLemore. I make videos about personal finance, investing, and side hustles. And in this video, I wanna give you a detailed breakdown of exactly the process that I choose to take once I get a paycheck in order to shed some light on what a person who is involved with finances all the time decides to do with their money. Now, I'm not gonna say that my way is gonna be by any means the best way or the smartest way or the most efficient way. It's just a way that I choose to take in that if you can find one thing of value to change about how you treat your finances in this video, then I would say that and maybe that's pretty successful. So if you think you're gonna like this video, then hit that like button for your boy as it really does help the channel out. But to get right into my particular payday routine, one of the first things or the prerequisites that you're going to need before you even get started in the payday routine is to actually have a budget set up. Now, I know I talk about budgets in a lot of my videos, but I think that this is ideal in one, being disciplined with your money, two, knowing where your money is and where it's going, and three, it's just good to be organized with this sort of thing. You don't wanna let something like your finances be disorganized, so having a budget is going to be essential before you even get started with your payday routine. I choose to use Google Sheets for my budgeting purposes because I like the Excel format. I like how I can have it on my phone or on my laptop, and how I would typically do it is I would list all of my income sources on the left side. Somewhere in the middle will have all of my expenses that I will break down in this video. But overall, before you even get started with your routine, you want to make sure you have a budget in place. So that's the only prerequisite I am going to be recommending in this video. Everything else is going to be completely optional. So going into my personal scenario, when I know that a payday is coming up, one of the first things that I do is review the last month pay period to see how actually on budget we were for the month. It is important to review your budgeting amount so that you know if you're budgeting enough or if you're budgeting way too much for different expenses. Fixed expenses like rent, utilities, and other things like that tend to stay the same from month to month. But if you have other miscellaneous expenses or if you have other essential expenses like groceries, like gas, I don't know, any of the other categories that you can think of, you wanna make sure that you actually allocate enough money or not too much money to these categories. One of the things that I've personally been tweaking a lot here and there on a monthly basis is going to be grocery expenses. I know we hear a lot about this inflationary environment that we're in. When three to four years ago, I was able to budget $100 a week for my family for groceries, where nowadays it's a little bit closer to $250 a week, and we really don't have that much different of a diet. It's just the fact that groceries are a little bit more expensive. We have been choosing to get a little bit more organic food, but over a 200% increase in two years in grocery expenses is definitely a testament to how the economy is right now, and another reason that you may want to focus on getting a budget. And another reason why I choose to review the last month's budget is that if I did over a budget for some amounts, it's going to leave me with some rollover money that I can then roll over into this new month's paycheck period. And before I get too deep into it, I do budget on a monthly basis. I don't budget on a paycheck by paycheck basis because with the number of different income sources that I have, it would be very difficult to try to budget from the 1st to the 15th and then from the 15th to the 21st and then from the 21st. To, it just will be a lot. So I choose the more common route of summing up all of the income that I get in the current month and then budgeting that over the expenses that I have that month. So once I review the previous month pay period, what is next is to actually receive the paycheck. And once you get your paycheck, you want to make sure that the money that you think you're going to get is going to be the money that you actually get. Now, this may seem like common sense for someone who is a salary worker whose paycheck is going to be very consistent. But if you work hourly or by commission and you think you're going to get a certain amount of money and that paycheck comes in way less or way more, this is when having a budget actually comes in handy because then you're able to tweak things here and there instead of blindly hoping that you can get through the month with whatever paycheck that you have. Now, I am in a fortunate position where I do work a nine to five as well as have multiple side hustles. So usually when I get paid these days, my W-2 job provides a consistent income and then I am able to use my side hustle income to reinvest into different side hustles or to actually save money for the nine to five. And then at the same time, once I actually do receive the paycheck, I am able to add any rollover money that was left over from the previous month to then put into this month's budget or this month's paycheck routine. And another piece of advice that I wanna talk about that I do when getting paid is that for my job that pays bi-weekly, I tend to treat that like it gets paid on the 15th and the 15th regardless. When you get paid bi-weekly, there's gonna be some months where you get paid on wonky days. Maybe you get paid on the 10th and the 24th some months, or maybe you get paid on the 1st and the 15th. And how I typically like to treat it is that whatever paycheck comes at the end of the previous month, I treat it as if it's gonna be paid on the 1st. So for example, I know it's getting confusing. If the month is January and I get paid on the 22nd of December, I will hold that paycheck in a separate account until January 1st and treat it like I got paid on January 1st. And then if the next check came on January 7th, I would hold that into a separate account and treat it like I got paid on January 15th. I found that this way 
gives me the most consistent in budgeting practice because if I think I'm getting paid on January 1st and I don't actually receive the paycheck until January 7th, then now a lot of my bills will be delayed. So I would rather have the money in my account before I budget for it, even if that means pretending that it's not there for a couple of weeks. That's just something that I have personally learned to do because I have run in situations where the pay periods don't exactly line up. Now, if you work in a job where you get paid on the 1st and the 15th or the 30th each month, then you can disregard those last points. But these are only gonna be jobs in situations where you get paid bi-weekly. And after I verify my paycheck amount, one of the first things I take out of my paycheck is going to be charitable giving or ties to the church. Now, I'm not gonna to get too preachy or too religious in this particular video, but I do think that there is some joy and there is some peace found when you give back to communities. And because I am a Christian, I like to make sure that the first portion of any money that I receive, even if it's not all the way 10% of my paycheck, is given back either to the church or given back to charitable purposes. Charitable giving is something that I have personally learned to find value in over time and have really began to experience joy when doing this. But that is gonna be up to you and your budget if you choose to do that. That is just what I choose to do with my money. And after deciding charitable giving, what I then do next in my paycheck routine is choose to actually pay myself. Now, I know that may seem a little bit confusing because I just paid myself by getting paid. But what I mean in this scenario is that I choose to either save or invest money. Or in most recent scenarios, I choose to pay off debt. The reason why I choose to do this before anything else is that I have a goal of a certain amount of money that I want to pay off debt or save or invest every single month. And if I know that, for example, I want to save or invest or pay off $5,000 worth of debt every single month by putting that at the top of my balance sheet or putting it at the top of my budget. If at the end of the month, my budget somehow comes up short, I didn't have to work to make up that difference. Whereas if I just chose at the very end to pay off debt and chose to use whatever money is left over, a lot of the times I probably wouldn't meet that hypothetical $5,000 goal. It may be 4,000, 3,000, 1,000 in some cases. And in those situations, I wouldn't have as much motivation to make up the difference. I know that I wanna hit a certain number every single month. So by putting it at the very first thing that I do every single month, I didn't have the drive and the motivation to make that happen. But once I pay off debt or save or invest money. The next thing that I do in my paycheck routine is start to analyze my business expenses. Now, most of the time these days, my business expenses are actually pretty low. The expenses to run this YouTube channel are less than $100 a month. I pay for an Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop subscription, and that's just to add my videos and create thumbnails, and that typically runs about $35 a month. I also pay for a training course and a mastermind group to help me grow this channel even more, which is a little bit more expensive, but overall, I see that as a reinvestment in this channel to make it better and to somehow make me more consistent in making videos. Some other business expenses that I have is gonna be the real estate that I own. For the rental property that I own, I have a mortgage expense as well as I choose to save for four other things, which is gonna be capital expenditures, vacancy, repairs, and maintenance. So typically those real estate expenses range from about $1,500 to $2,000 a month, and I like to bite the bullet on those things early. If you don't have a business, then obviously you won't need to worry about that. But if you're following along with your own personal budget, what I would do next in my paycheck routine is then start to budget out my essential expenses. Now, my my essential expenses are not gonna be any different than most people's. I have a rent expense for the house that I'm renting right now, utilities expense, car insurance, auto loan payments, all of those things, including the little things like Netflix, Apple Music, gym memberships. And the thing that I personally like to do with all of these little expenses is that I like to list every single expense line by line in my budget. There is no such thing as a miscellaneous column that includes five different subscriptions. I wanna see every single subscription that I'm paying for. If it's Netflix and Hulu and Disney Plus and Paramount Plus, I am going to list every single one one of them in my budget, even if the amount is less than $50. Because when there comes a day when I choose to review my budget and I have to cut back some subscriptions, I will know exactly how much I'm paying for every single one, which is gonna make it extremely easier for me. And it may be a little bit more work when you're initially setting up your budget, but once you're maintaining your budget, you can just copy one month to the other and keep it rolling forward. So once you have everything included, it really isn't all that much extra work. And most of the time, your essential expenses should be some of those fixed expenses that I talked about earlier. They really shouldn't change all that much on a month to month basis, but what will start to change is what I'm gonna be talking about next to my paycheck routine, which is gonna be those variable expenses. Now, variable expenses are gonna be things like your grocery budget, your spending budget, your miscellaneous budget. Now, I know I just said I didn't have miscellaneous budget, but sometimes you need a miscellaneous category for variable expenses just in case something comes up. So as of right now, I do live in the state of Alabama and I have a three family household. So we are budgeting $200 a week or $800 a month for grocery expenses. Other expenses like daycare and miscellaneous come to about another $400 to $500 a month. So overall, that can be anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 a month, depending on a particular month, depending on if there are any holidays in that month, if there are any trips that we're planning, if there are any birthdays. Typically, it usually ranges about $1,000 to $1,500 a month for my personal family. And as I mentioned, that miscellaneous expense can be for something like eating out or going on a date every now and then. You never know what can actually come up within that month that you don't plan for before. So I do personally like to put aside a couple hundred dollars
knowledge just in case that something happens. It could be an opportunity to do something that you didn't think you would be able to do. And I personally don't like to budget so tightly that I don't have any room left to be spontaneous. And then one of the last things that I do at the very end of my paycheck routine is set monthly goals for myself that I wanna strive to hit for the end of the month. And I know that I tend to be a penny pincher. I tend to be a tight budgeter. So one of my monthly goals could consist of staying on $800 for the grocery expenses, or even these days it could be to make a certain amount of money doing side hustles to then support the next month's budget. I am always and forever gonna be a proponent of living within your means. I am never gonna tell you to live extravagantly at the expense of your own financial health. So knowing how to save money and be disciplined and then make other money by building businesses of your own is going to be a common theme here on the channel. But to that extent, that is pretty much what I do every single time I get paid. I set a budget, I follow that budget, and then I set different guidelines for myself during the month. So if you find any kind of value in this video, then make sure you hit that like button for your boy, as well as hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. I am trying to get this channel to 100,000 subscribers, so it really would mean a lot to me if you did that. But until next video, guys.